Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Kate Carter, and Kate is the founder and CEO of Life Chronicles. Welcome, Kate. Hi, Cinder. Gosh. You are amazing. Your organization is amazing. I'm so thrilled that you're with us today. So for those who don't know about Life Chronicles, maybe you could give us a little snippet of, you know, the thinking behind it, what what you do, that sort of thing. Well, it was 26 years ago. Uh, I had done a television internship at Channel 17 uh, 30 years ago, I think now. And uh, my friends all said, Katie, you're really good at this. What are you going to do with this? And I said, I don't know. I'm not interested in commercial television, but I'd like to do something meaningful with it. I don't know what that is, but I'll know it when I see it. And it was a couple years later that a close friend of mine told me that she'd been told to get her affairs in order, that she had terminal cancer. Her husband had just passed from ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and the kids were 16, 13, and 10. So it was a couple of days of walking around, you know, and they told her to get her affairs in order. So I was... Just what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? And I thought, well, I can do video. I called her and I said, Terry, I want to sit you in front of the camera and I want you to tell the children everything you want them to know for the rest of their lives. And that's how it all started. And then the day she passed, a few months later, I I called Gail Rink, who at the time had been years as the director of hospice, Mm -hmm. and Tom Rollerson from the Dream Foundation said, this is what I'm going to do. And we started as a nonprofit because we didn't want anyone ever to not be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. Too important. So you go all over, all over the country? We've done 435 cities now, 41 states. We've done two in the U.K. and five in Canada so far. And you are just traveling hither and yon constantly. You People call you. You don't go out beating the bushes. People call you or contact you. Right. We don't market this. We have a website, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, but what happens is once people know about us, hospices. We've done over 80 families for Dana-Farber Cancer Center at Harvard in Boston, in the New England area. We've done Stanford Cancer Center, the Kimmel Cancer Center at Johns Hopkins, all over. And then a lot of times people are in a support group that hear about us, you know, uh, maybe Mm -hmm. breast cancer patients or whatever. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, we do one of them, and then, then then they're referring to each other and and then there are people who literally tell us all they did was go on the Internet looking mm. for someone who could help them record stories. And our focus is seniors and seriously ill. So it's not always someone who's terminally ill. Mm-hmm. It can just be seniors. but And sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's a seriously sure. ill senior. But um, they look for us and find us on the Internet. Wow. And so the, you get calls. I mean, y- y- I, I think you've got them stacked up for the rest of the year, places you're right going. Right now we've had requests from Washington, D.C., Louisiana, Charleston, see if I can get them all, Arizona, <laughs> uh, Portland, uh, two in the in San Francisco, and we just got one in Arizona. I haven't even called them back yet. But they come in all the time, and they're not solicited. They come to us. And you just go there practically at the drop of a hat and interview whoever it makes sense, so the, the, the person who is terminal and their spouse or their, I don't know, whoever, how, how do you decide who you're going to interview? Well, it's usually a person who's in a situation. They're the focal point, but mm-hmm. we always encourage families to do this together. Okay. Whoever's close to them, sometimes it's a friend, they don't have a spouse or whatever, or children, because we were given a study when we first started a doctoral dissertation, and one of the things that it showed in the study was that by filming people together, Whoever remains remembers not just the sight and sound of the person who's gone. They remember what it felt like to be with them. Oh, gosh. And Keck Medical School at USC has done a white paper on our work because of the therapeutic value. When we started, we didn't think in terms of therapeutic value. We thought it was memories, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's just evolved over and over because we respond to what we can tell people or what they need. And what we found was people who needed to have meaningful conversations before they're gone with people they care about. And so, obviously, it's transformative for the people that you're interviewing, the families and all. I've also heard that it's transformative for the people behind the camera, the ones who were actually That's right. In the early days, and literally the first time I gathered some close friends, they just happened to be all female, and said, I want to do this, will you help me? One was an attorney, one was an accountant, all those things that you need to start, especially a nonprofit. 
And we sat down and we made a list, which I still have to this day in our computer. And the last thing it said, volunteers, especially high school students. And we do college students too. But we knew from the beginning that what we were going to film would be very profound Mm -hmm. because people at end of life don't talk about inconsequential things. They talk about what really matters because they don't have time for anything else. So they want to get to the heart of it. And we knew that this would have a really positive, profound impact, especially on young people. We know they come to us because they think video is cool. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, They want to do sure. the production. Yeah. But they stay with us for years because of the impact it's had on them. Wow. A profound impact. So you have, you meaning the organization, Life Chronicles, has a very, very special award that you give out every year. Every year? We started in 2010. Okay. We've done it every year. I think we didn't do it during COVID uh-huh. for a couple of years, sure. maybe. Um, but we decided that we wanted to honor people because when we film people, and I get so many calls with you, oh, you wait till you film my grandfather. He has the most amazing stories. You probably never taped anybody as amazing as him. <laughs> and I always smile because everybody's stories are fascinating. Yes, yes. Everybody has a story. But we thought, wouldn't it be fun to honor each year a couple uh, who had had remarkable lives and been you know, beneficial to the community, mm-hmm. just amazing people, and honor them as our annual fundraising event. Okay. And it's always been super well received, you know, different themes sometimes this time because we honored Harry and Judy Wise part and Harry loves to dance. Yes. Which I do too. Mm-hmm. We decided to call Dancing with Our Stars uh-huh. and focus on that just as a theme. But uh, we love that we do, we do a video of, of each couple okay. that we show at the event, some of it. Uh, pretty long, so we don't show all of it. And that way we share with the community. And we honor these people who deserve to be recognized for what they've done for other people. Gosh. And so um, thank you for talking about the fundraising because the fact is Life Chronicles is a nonprofit, 501c3. And so a person can make a financial donation by going on your your website. I bet you've got a Donate Now button. We do. We have a tab at the top that says Donations. Good, good. You can certainly go to lifechronicles.org. And uh, yeah, we and we don't turn anyone away mm-hmm. that can't afford to donate. Okay, some are quite generous. We do have a an, an amount that we offer to people that if they can do any part of that, that would be great. But no one gets turned away. It's too important. Once yeah. a person's gone, that's gone, and we can't go back and get their story or the things they want to say before they're gone. Yeah, such important, powerful work that you're doing. So. We have about a minute left. So what what other message would you have in this little time? Well, you did ask for... me about a story, and there's a bazillion of them I could talk yes, for a yes, long time Yes, yes, I'd love a story. But we had a recent one that I really love because um, in the early days, I, I just had this sense that what we were doing was important and would become more important to the people we'd served as the years go by. So months ago, we got a call from a 24-year-old woman in Toronto we had filmed her with her mother when she was 11 years old, mm. 13 years before. Wow. Her mother was dying, and we filmed her with her mother and her 14-year-old sister as well. And she called, and she said, we found a DVD. It doesn't work anymore. We don't even make DVDs anymore. But when for the period of time that we did, we're converting as many of those as we can, by oh. the way. So uh, she said, tell me you have my mother's video. And I said, we keep everything. We've always archived everything. Oh, so we have gosh. almost 2,000 videos that are archived. So I told her, I'll put it in the computer. We'll turn it into a link for you and get it to you. And other things happened that were really cool. But she called me back after she got it. She said, you have no idea what this means to me. I said, honey, I've been doing this for 26 years. I know exactly what it means to you. And she laughed and she goes, yeah, you do. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that is a beautiful story. But we did say that, I, I said it in the beginning, I think it'll be years before we fully realize the impact of what we're doing. Yeah. And now it's happening more and more. Kate, thank you for your profound, amazing work that touches the lives of so many people. We really appreciate all that you're doing and for coming on our show to tell us about well, it. It's always a pleasure, Cinder. And so we're going to take a little break and we're going to, when we come back, we're going to bring the, um, the, wo- the woman who received the most recent Remarkable Life Award, she along with her husband, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. And so now we have the recipient of the Remarkable Life Award, Judy Weisbart. Judy, along with her husband, Harry, recently received the Remarkable Life Award from Life Chronicles. 
Hello, Judy. Thanks for being here. Hello, Cinder. Thanks for having me. Oh, gosh. You know, <laughs> I can only imagine. I don't have to imagine. I know why you and Harry were chosen for this important award. You are everywhere. You do so many things. You and Harry both for so many nonprofits and you support Life Chronicles and oh golly. So so tell us about what inspired you to get involved with Life Chronicles, all your work with nonprofits. Well, first of all, I think we all know those of us who live in Santa Barbara, it's a privilege to live here. And a part of the privilege is the nonprofit. So we take care of our own in a way that's just magnificent as far as I'm concerned. So my connection with nonprofits is I believe that community serves itself when those who live in community choose to serve. So mm -hmm. Harry and I have always chosen to serve. Um, I ended up starting a business serving uh, that people pay me for, too. Um, so I'm not called. as good as I sound. I'm not as good as I, it's called a busy woman consulting. <laughs> um, so I started in the nonprofit world, obviously doing, you know, I, I was working in schools with my kids doing that kind of thing. And then finally, my first big job was I was the first program director for women's economic ventures in 93 when, um, at the time I remember Marsha Bailey starting like six months before and she had people come in and speak, but didn't have an actual program developed. Mm -hmm. So I was honored to be able to work with her to develop that program, which now years later is one of the most important organizations. Yes, it is. So I did the program director position for about three and a half years. And then I ended up becoming the development director mm -hmm. when I realized that I was good at asking people for money. <laughs> um, which, you know, when there's only two people working in an organization, you don't really have a choice. And from there, I've been um, development director for uh, the ADL, Anti-Defamation League, uh, bringing No Place for Hate into Santa Barbara, both the schools, the university, and with all of the uh, law enforcement. Um, I've also worked with a number since I started my business. Um, actually, before I worked with the World Business Academy with Ronaldo Brudico, mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. doing amazing work, um, trying to close Diablo Canyon and doing environmental work. So... I, I believe that social justice, environmental work, and community has to be fought for in a really positive way, and that's what I do. And now with my company, um, which I am retiring from next year. Oh, my gosh. I am, Cindy. News bulletin. I am. I'm, I am trying. Um, I work with amazing groups of people. I work with the Food Bank and with Communify and with New Beginnings and with Life Chronicles and with the firefighters after the fires and just numerous organizations. My husband has always felt really strongly that he works with those who are in need at home. So he delivered food for a long time. He worked with Kata with a kid that needed a mentor. He uh, worked um, in a couple of the old age homes. Now, you've got to understand that my husband is 88, still dances twice a week. So he doesn't <laughs> he think he's older. Guy. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, so the two of us just do the joy of being of service. And that's why we were honored by, I believe, why Kate and the others chose us. So. Oh, gosh. And how wise they are to have chosen <laughs> both of you. And, you know, not only do you do such important work in our community, but you are, both of you, are like a beacon, uh, so, uh, sort of setting a, a high level example for other people of how to give back, how to volunteer, how to do their part in the community. That's sweet. Um, I think we are in our own way. I don't think that we see ourselves that way, but I get it. <laughs> um, I think that my passion for Life Chronicles um, is not giving back to everybody. It's giving back to me. And I think that if <laughs> you're honest about being a philanthropist if you have the money or a volunteer if you choose that route is really not for the organization. It's really not. If you're really honest, it's for you. That is such a good point. It's true. And true. Yeah. It fills a place inside you that you need to fill to be able to feel whole and complete um, and for me, the Life Chronicles has been my life's work. Um, I was eight years old when my father died. Um, 
He kissed me goodnight one night, went out for dinner with my mother, had a massive heart attack, oh, was in the hospital when I woke up in the morning and died that afternoon. And I never saw him again. And it's profoundly affected who I am. Um, in fact, Gloria Vanderbilt said something brilliant uh, when her son, Anderson Cooper, asked, what happened when your dad died? How did it change you? And she said, I knew that I could do anything I needed to do by myself in the world, which is true. Wow. And I also knew that I would never feel safe again, Oh, which is true. So as it, that child, I never really had that vision of my father of protecting me or being there, and therefore I was going to do it. I had a great mom, um, but I desperately wanted to hear his voice. Mm. I desperately wanted to And you to couldn't see remember. You couldn't remember his voice. No. And I couldn't remember how he walked oh. or how he crossed his leg, which oh. my mother would say when my brother would do something, that's just how your dad oh, did it. Oh, gosh. And I think that that's what the gift of Life Chronicles is. They show the person, and you get to have that experience on film for the rest of your life. So you wished that you would have had a video of your dad that you could watch. So much. So and much. so since you couldn't do that, you're going to help make that possible for other people. Bless your heart. Exactly. Oh, but like sorry. I say, we do it because it's what we need, right? That's why we do a lot of the things we do. And, and yeah, so I, I love Life Chronicles, but I think it's really important for people to know that she, you know, Kate, the amazing being, yes, the, angel, she is. the um, angel being, um, didn't name it Death Chronicles. <laughs> she actually named it Life Chronicles for a reason. So my husband and I gave ourselves a gift oh. at our 40th wedding anniversary, oh. which was almost 12 years ago. Um, when I had brown hair, uh, we actually <laughs> did a video um, talking to our kids about how we met, what went on. I'm a second wife, so the relationship, you know, in taking on a different family, um, his children, and then we had a child, and how they're all connected. And I think that that's really important for people to understand that yeah. Kate does this for people who are elderly and dying, but the reality is ultimately we're all dying. <laughs> so why don't you do it before right. you are not feeling well? Yeah. Because honestly, it's the greatest thing we did. We love it. We're, our kids get to know the real truth about us. I did it with my mother. For my mother, it was magnificent. She got to tell her stories of the Second World War. Oh. And, of this, and we showed it at her funeral. Gosh. It was great. It was wonderful. So you... So Life Chronicles did a video of your mom. Did what just your mom or you and your mom? Me or? and my mom and then my mom on her own. So I would say that okay, Kate okay. interviewed my mom for about three hours. Mm. So my mom was in the British Army, my father was in the American Army, and she told that whole story. And that's what's so exciting about Life Chronicles. They actually have stories. Um that you don't hear unless your grandparents told you or whomever. Yeah. Um that I think can educate our children on a really deep spiritual, emotional level in the same way that I wish I could have seen my father um, and heard him. Yeah. I think that when you tell stories from your experience, you can actually educate especially younger people with a reality that they don't necessarily have in mm -hmm. their lives. So Ultimately, I would love for every Life Chronicle to be digitized and AI to put it in its own little space yeah. so that kids could actually do papers on what it was like in the Second World War, what it was like for people who had babies out of wedlock when that was the word. Um, yes. You know, what it was like to have abortions, what it was like to have, you know, a father who died when you were eight. Yes. Those experiences for children are not discussed, mm -hmm. but they're told. And if they're told and they are registered on film, you're doing great gifts for the future. Great gifts for the future. Life Chronicles. I love that. You just have quite a gift for putting words together, my dear. <laughs> so, and your family is, they just love that video of you and Harry. They do. Um, I mean... I don't know. Do your kids ever love anything you do, really? <laughs> <laughs> Harry and I love it. Oh, well, we that's good. It that's great. Important. <laughs> <laughs> no, well. they, they appreciated it. They did. And, and I think more importantly, they appreciated my mother's because I don't know if you appreciate 
what you have. I think you appreciate yes. what you lose. Yep, yep. So I think that at death, people look at things in a different way yeah. than when the person's still there. Yeah. Oh, Judy. Well, congratulations to you and Harry thank on you. receiving that important <laughs> award. And thank you so much to you and Harry for all the work that you're doing and for the light that you shine on our whole community. We appreciate you. I feel the same way about you, Cinder, because without <laughs> you, there would be no light on us. Oh. And at everything I've ever been to that you and I have been to, you two have been the ones dancing with Harry and I more than anyone else. So, <laughs> Well, you, you two get are fun to end. dance with. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming on our show and sharing your story. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.